are what you eat. So the key to health is to remain in a positive nutrient balance. Um, as you guys are very well aware, there are about 10 million trillion different kinds of diets out there. Um, a lot of different rules, a lot of different stuff that can leave you pretty confused about what are some of the best practices. Um, so there's, there's research that shows that if you can eat Twinkies and you stay at you know, a certain low amount of calories, you can lose weight. Um, and then there's other ways that say you know, a high fat diet is the best way to lose weight as long as your calories are in range. Um, so the thing that we always want to pay attention to is not what we're eating as much as that we make a choice and we follow through and we become the right dieter. Okay, so there's no one particular right diet. Uh, it's about finding what works uh, for you, right? So we talked about um, marrying a diet, right? Not just You can date around a little bit, but then you wanna marry one particular diet. Um, so you do wanna fit one that fits into your lifestyle. One of the things that's really critical and key for most of us is uh, <clears throat> how our appetite dictates and drives um, our food choices, right? So knowing what to eat is one thing, but craving to eat the right things um, instead of, you know, Taco Bell or whatever it is that uh, I end up eating way too much of, um, that's what we really want to tackle, right? So we want to use our intelligence, but we also want to use our intelligence to try to control our appetite and keep it within range. Okay, so you guys may remember that uh, the average person is 100 trillion cells, right? Those cells are designed to communicate, so send and receive chemical and electrical impulses. We're on our final week of um, the things that can disrupt health, known as the health disruptors, right? So we talked about stress and pollution. We ran through that quickly last week. Same way with, um, sorry, stress. Uh, we talked about lack of sleep last week and uh, malnutrition, right? So today we're going to be covering more precisely malnutrition, but I want to go over this since we've already gone over it. I want to go over it quickly before so that we can start to tie everything together. I know like when we first went over this, it was a lot, but now that you guys have a greater understanding of all the um, smaller parts of it, it should make a little bit more sense to you. So calories in, calories out. That's the biggest primary uh, factor that goes into your progress, right? So when you guys are exercising, when you're making good nutrition choices, um, you're creating an energy deficit or surplus or balance of some sort that's gonna dictate whether or not you're gaining weight, gaining fat, losing weight, losing fat, whatever it is. Um, the, what you're eating is the biggest dictator of that, okay? So some of the things we do need to consider is, um, you know, calories in is one thing, calories out is another thing, but we talked about factoring. So you guys may remember that talk from a while ago, um, how your metabolism needs to be functioning as best as possible so that when you do bring in calories, your body burns them off easily, right? Um, and think about that for your brain function, your energy, your mood, uh, all of those things are kind of dictated by the health of your cells, the health of your metabolism, okay? Um, so pollution, which we talked about a few weeks ago when we went through quickly last week, um, we need to make sure that we are getting rid of our toxins and those things disrupt our health. They disrupt our metabolism, slow things down, make us not feel all that great. Right, so we've got a whole bunch of different detox organs. Uh, we want to make sure that we're detoxifying those in the ways that we have discussed. Stress obviously impacts the way that we behave, it, it impacts our decision making skills, um, and it slows down and, and disrupts our hormones and, and our metabolism as well. If we don't sleep, we really don't function that way anyway. Okay, so all of those things lead to inflammation right inflammation is like a swollen ankle right it still is an ankle it still kind of works but it doesn't quite work the way that it's supposed to so we want to make sure that our factory right is not all jammed up and and inflamed so to speak so that's why we do want to pay a lot of attention to um, our stress our uh, our pollution toxins and our sleep okay so this is what we're covering mostly this week, right? So food can fulfill essential nutrient needs, right? So if I need an essential nutrient, and we'll talk about that, we wanna make sure that food can get that. Uh, food can actually balance our stress response. You guys remember last week when we were talking about stress and sleep, 
how um, if you keep your carbohydrate levels low in the morning, that can help you actually have more energy throughout the day. And then when you eat a little bit more carbohydrates at night, they can actually help you sleep. Did you guys try that? Mm. All right, so this we did get to try. Did you try? I wasn't here the past two days. So, oh, you know. well, the two weeks? Oh, yeah. Or two weeks, yeah. I was out there working on that. Gotcha. Well, you need to do that. You might find it more beneficial for your gains. Um, all right, so, uh, yeah. Food can help prevent um, inflammation as well, right? So we talked about if food, if you eat a food that causes inflammation to you that you're sensitive to or intolerant to, uh, that can be an inflammatory thing as well. All right, so appetite is driven by lax, right? So appetite is something that fills us up, fulfill, right? So when I'm eating, I'm eating because I want to get full, but what am I empty of? question that we always have to ask you. What am I empty of? Energy. Right, energy, right? So if I don't have enough energy, I'm going to find food and I'm going to eat it for the energy purposes. But do you lack energy? You lack the feeling of energy, right? But you don't actually lack energy, which is really interesting for us to think about, right? Because our fat and our muscles and all those things, those are storage sites of energy, right? So unless you don't have any muscle or you don't have any fat, you're never actually truly out of energy. What you're out of is the ability to use that energy. Okay, so think about it a little bit like a um, a car, right? So if you um, have just filled up your gas, right, and you go to start the car, um, and the car doesn't start, right, because gasoline is energy. What's wrong with the car? Something else. Something else, right? So in order for a car to run, and I'm not a mechanic, but in order for a car to run. Um, the fuel needs to be taken from the gas tank, right, into the engine, and it needs to be combusted, okay? <clears throat> so you are basically, all of us, are full of energy, right? So if we go to try to start our engine, and it's not functioning the way that we want it to, right, assuming we have enough sleep and all that kind of stuff, then there's probably something else going on. It's our inability to use that energy, right? If my blood sugar's low, same thing, right? I need to... The, my blood sugar should not actually be low. I should be able to, to regulate my blood, uh, my blood sugar. Uh, lack of chemical satisfaction. This is a really big one. Who eats because they're bored? Okay. Who eats because they, you know, they had a bad day and all food makes me feel better, right? Stress, whatever it is, right? We all eat because of this, but what makes us feel is our, our brain chemicals, our, our serotonin, dopamine, all that kind of stuff. Um, and those are actually produced by our gut lining, by the way, so our gut's very important, and they're produced um, by essential nutrients. So we should be having a pretty normal mood, right? So it's like one thing if, if something sad happened and you feel sad, like you should feel sad, but it's another thing if nothing sad happened and you feel sad, right? Um, so that would indicate that there's some sort of issue going on with your chemical production and you can help support better chemical production through your foods and, and your essentials. So at the end of the day, guys, what regulates our appetite is our essential nutrients. Making sure that we're getting our vitamins, minerals, essential amino acids, essential fatty acids, and water. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that um, in the next lecture here, okay? So we wanna make sure that we're attacking our five or four health disruptors, right? Uh, thinking about our appetite, our um, circadian rhythm, factory settings, metabolism, all that kind of stuff, right? So we're taking all that in con into consideration. We want to start to consider how we can support that, right? And if essential nutrients are one of the driving forces between energy, blood sugar regulation, our mood, um, our sleep and wake cycles, right? It's really important that we are paying attention and focusing on our um, nutrients, okay? So I'm gonna get a little bit more into this but uh, a high quality multivitamin, fantastic. That's a wonderful way to start out. Essential fatty acids. Um, if your digestive system isn't functioning well, then your multivitamin, your essential fatty acids aren't gonna work, right? Because your body's not absorbing it or digesting it properly. So we wanna make sure uh, that our digestion's working well so we can use digestive enzymes, probiotics, fiber, all that kind of stuff. Um, and add any other vitamin or mineral that you might be lacking. So some people are, and take all these things, but they still might be low in vitamin D, particularly in the winter time. So it might be smart for people to start to um, start to uh, um, supplement with those types of things. 
Cool, I'm gonna go into this a little bit more in detail, but food quality is very, very important, so we're gonna focus on that. Uh, we talked about last week how food timing influences our circadian rhythm, right? Our sleep-wake cycle. Uh, so high fat, low carb breakfast, higher carb um, dinners can really help put your body into um, a good state, a good sleep-wake cycle. Okay, make sure that you hit your caloric intake, right? Doesn't matter what kind of diet you have. If you're way overeating your calories, guess what's gonna start to happen to you? Gain you're gonna gain weight, even if it's like the most healthy food you've ever had in your whole entire life. Uh, that's really how it's gonna be for you. So you can actually go to this really cool website called exrx.net. Um, there's a, a calculator thing you can go to. Actually, is this thing a functional link? No, it's not a functioning link. So, um, so you can go there, find um, energy requirements or food requirements, and you just type in your age, your uh, gender, your body fat, height, and um, then say how many hours you're doing resting or you know light activity or moderate activity, um, and it will give you a calculation of how many calories you want to be consuming on that particular day. So it kind of takes the guesswork out of it. Now I don't recommend everybody do that because that's a lot of work, right? And then so even if you know how many calories you're supposed to be eating, are you going to go like weigh and measure your food and all that kind of stuff, right? So if that's not something you're interested in doing, you don't necessarily need to do that because if you can attack your appetite, usually you don't have to think too much about all that kind of stuff. So we'll, we'll get into that um, a little bit more here in just a second. So here's the deal. You are what you eat and you get out what you put in, right? Put in healthy food, you get out a healthy person, right? You put in good, good love and exercise and nutrition, and that's what you get out with yourself. Cool? Any questions with that? Yeah. I went like over an hour the first time I gave the presentation and then uh, like 10 minutes for this one. So we're gonna do a couple review types of things um, that we just covered, but we're gonna go a little slower, get a little bit more in depth. And again, like I said, please ask questions if you do have any. So here's the deal, malnutrition. What are nutrients? Okay, so there are things called macronutrients, big nutrients. Those are things like carbohydrates, proteins, fats. Okay, so if you guys ever hear somebody say, what are your macros? They're asking you how many grams of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats you're consuming each day. Um, and those are important, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Then you have your micronutrient. Um, things like essential vitamins, essential minerals, uh, and just your overarching essential thing is all right. So this is what the definition of essential is. I think we use the word essential in a lot of ways to where it kind of desensitizes us to its meaning. Yeah. Um, but if I want you guys to take this literally, right? So when I'm saying essential, nutrients are literally essential for your life. So if you're not getting enough of them, guess what happens to your life? Sure. You, yeah, it shortens, you die, you have issues and stuff like that, right? So the essential, I went to uh, Merriam-Webster dictionary here. Um, so, you know, it's of the utmost importance. It's a substance that cannot be synthesized in the body. Um, so, I mean, your body can't produce it on its own. You have to get it from some outside source, right? So this is kind of important. So when it comes to macronutrients, calories are, of course, the most important thing. Right? We want to make sure that our calories are within balance, but calories don't necessarily regulate our appetite. And calories don't necessarily mean just because we're putting in gasoline doesn't mean we're actually going to be able to utilize it. Right? So, yes, sir. Isn't it fat nine calories per gram? What did I put? It says four. Oh, boo. All right. Yes. Nice. Typo. Thank you for finding that. Um, all right. So, Calories come from carbohydrates, proteins, and fats. So our macronutrients are where our calories come from, right? So one gram of carbohydrate is four calories per gram. Uh, one gram of protein is four calories per gram. One gram of fat is nine calories per gram. Uh, and alcohol is seven calories per gram. So that's why you, if you ever do the math on your Michelob Ultra, <laughs> it's 95 calories, but only like one point something grams of carbs. So how many calories is coming from carbohydrates? Eight. About eight calories. How many calories is coming from alcohol? The rest. Right, like 80 something, right? So, um, 
And alcohol is a non-essential. So we all know. Right? <laughs> um, that that stress. Right? Right? Um, right, so here's some of the things that carbohydrates do. Right? So the, so the macronutrient of carbohydrates, it's used for brain fuel. So your, your brain actually prefers carbohydrates uh, to be burned to make your brain work well. Right? If you guys ever have had a, like, a long time between meals and your blood sugar starts to, starts to drop, your brain function, you might get a little foggy here and there. Anybody ever experienced that before? Uh, some people are really good at regulating blood sugar, so they never have to worry about it. Uh, obviously, carbohydrates are important for blood sugar regulation. We want to make sure that we have enough blood sugar. Um, and it's actually essential for short bursts of energy. So if you guys are ever on like a low-calorie diet or a low-carb diet, and uh, you go try to do like a pretty high-intensity run or exercise, you don't last nearly as long. Okay, And part of the reason why is because your body literally needs to have um, those carbohydrates for that short bursts of energy. Okay, proteins, these are actually essential. So by the way, our body can actually live without any carbohydrates at all. So our body has the ability to live without carbohydrates. Um, and you'll hear a lot with the keto type diets, the Atkins type diets, how, oh, well, you don't really need to have carbohydrates, they're not essential, and that's kind of true. Um, I always counter that with, um, there's only one nutrient that our body can uh, start digesting in our mouth. Everything else has to be digested in our gut, but carbohydrates, our mouth can actually start to break down. That's when we put a cracker in your mouth, it starts to dissolve. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that doesn't happen with steak, right? It doesn't happen <laughs> <laughs> with anything else. Um, so when people say that carbohydrates, like, are, are, we're not supposed to have carbohydrates, or are the humans are not adapted to carbohydrates, I go, really? Because we have salivary amylase, which is what breaks down. Right, so if you don't produce that, then you can have your argument, but since you do, carbohydrates are not the devil. Um, you can have them. Uh, proteins are, however, absolutely essential. If you don't get enough protein, you will die, okay? Proteins are, um, so our body can produce proteins out of other raw materials, but there's actually eight to 11 uh, essential amino acids that you get from your proteins. They are the building blocks of literally everything. So your DNA, your RNA, your, your gene expression, um, the structures of your, your bones, your brain, your and everything, everything has a backbone of uh, amino acids. So really important that we're getting in enough protein, right? If I don't have enough carbohydrates, uh, proteins can actually go through a process called gluconeogenesis, uh, which basically means it's producing a new glucose, a new sugar, out of a non-sugar, which protein can provide that for you, okay? Um, fats. Uh, there are essential fatty acids, right? So those are like your omega fatty acids and things like that. Um, our brain and our nerve, he nerve health and structure is actually built on fatty acids, okay? So uh, if you guys are gonna have kids or have had kids or anything like that, uh, DHA, which is an omega-3 fatty acid, really, really, really important for brain development. Don't have too much because your kids will come out too smart, but anyway. <laughs> um, so that's, our, our nervous system, our brain, all those types of things do run on fats. So fats are actually essential. You can't live without having these essential fats. Um, fat is utilized for like prolonged energy expenditure, right? So if I'm walking, if I'm just sitting here, if I'm sleeping, um, my body's going to prefer that I burn more fat as fuel. Okay, and so we talked about a little bit about growth hormone and sleep and how important it is to increase your body's ability to utilize fat as fuel. So that's what we want to try to do. We want to try to get ourselves into that. All right, so alcohol, what kind of uh, essential things? None, none whatsoever. So, what is DHA found in naturally, like food wise? Uh, fish, like fish? fatty acids, okay. yeah, so fish oil, stuff okay. like that. Krill, um, seafood, generally speaking, uh, that's pretty much it. There's like special foods you can get it in, but naturally speaking, you're going to get most of it through. Mm -hmm. Micronutrient essentials, right? So guys, macronutrient stuff, we live in America, it's not that hard to get macronutrients. None of us are like, oh, well, you know, like you're not the starving African child who's, you know, emaciated. Like most of us, we get more than essential amounts. Now I could actually argue that most people don't get enough protein or essential fatty acids, but we at least get enough that we're not dying okay, from starvation. We are probably dying from malnutrition, but different kind of malnutrition. Uh, so micronutrient essentials. This is really where actually we as a society need a lot more work on. So 
What are they essential for? Well, your immune system, right? That's kind of a big deal recently. You guys may have heard there is a virus that's going around that is <laughs> and things. Um, right, so <clears throat> your immune system is, is built on making sure that you have enough uh, essential nutrients. Um, your energy production, right? So we talked about the fuel that goes into the car, right? So you can have your carbohydrates, your proteins, and your fats, but if you don't have essential micronutrients it's like you don't have a fuel pump right it's like you don't have a spark plug okay you just can't do anything with it so next time you feel like you're low on energy you're probably low on vitamins and minerals okay or some something of that uh, it's essential for hormone production you cannot make hormones unless you have essential nutrients um, you cannot create neurotransmitters, that's your brain's happy feelings, unless you have essential nutrients and you cannot detoxify or de-stress for that matter if you don't have essential nutrients. Okay, so let's think about this for a second. The more you're exposed to viruses and bacteria, the more you're required, right, your immune system, the more is required of your immune system. Okay, so should you have more or less essential micronutrients when you have compromise immune system. More, you need more, right? And the same thing here. If I need more energy, I need more of these. If I need my hormones and neurotransmitters and detoxification needs improvement, I need more, right? And especially when it comes to stress too, right? We live in an environment and a world where we're exposed to this stuff and we're, we're demanded of these things. So, you know, what perhaps a caveman needed uh, back in the day, we need like twice as much, three times as much, who knows? Um, so those are things that we want to continue to pay attention to. Essential minerals. Um, so here's just, I'm just going to give you a list of all the essential minerals. There's calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sodium, chloride, magnesium, iron, zinc, copper, manganese, iodine, selenium, uh, I can't even pronounce it, myobilium, chromium, and fluoride. Okay? All essential nutrients. Okay? Essential vitamins, vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D. I meant to put vitamin E, sorry, and then D. You didn't catch me on that one. Vitamin K uh, and vitamin B, which there's eight different kinds of vitamin Bs, okay? So, should you guys be concerned about malnutrition? Yeah. Should you be really concerned about malnutrition? Eh, not really. Um, but if you want to be functioning optimally, you do want to be concerned with that, right? Um, so, in a survey of thousands of college athletes, the researchers found that all of the athletes were deficient in at least three essential nutrients. Okay, so think about that. We're talking about Division One college athletes. We're talking about young studs and studesses. I don't know how to say that. Um, who, even though they're functioning at a high level, could actually function better because they're they're low on that. So. And they're, you know, I don't know if you guys have ever been to like a college um, weight room or anything like that. Like they get, they get Steve vitamins Steve. and minerals and, and they get all kinds of uh, protein supplements and all kinds of stuff. And even then, they're testing low on their essential nutrients, right? So how much more are you probably testing low on your, or me or anyone, right? Testing low on our essential nutrients, right? Uh, you guys may hear this like, well, you don't need to take a multivitamin or anything like that because you can get enough through your food. Well, ideally, yeah, you should be able to do that. However, the North American soil is about 85% depleted of all of its nutrients, right? So even the foods that are like vegetables and all that kind of stuff that's nutrient dense, um, we're still not quite getting, um, we're probably not getting enough. We're still probably coming short. Even if you're getting really high quality ones, are you eating all the different colors of the rainbow, so to speak? Right, so every day are you eating a white vegetable, a green vegetable, a yellow vegetable, an orange vegetable, a purple vegetable, a blue vegetable? Mm -hmm. No, right, we don't, that's just impractical for us to do. And the different colors, by, by the way, they're different colors because they have different concentrations of vitamins and minerals in them. Is that an absorption problem too, though, with your body? There can be, okay. right. And so that's where the digestive system kind of comes into play as well, where we want to pay attention to that. Um, so that's, that's a great question. So a lot of it does come down to absorption. So if you cook uh, vegetables, for instance, people are like, well, you should never cook your vegetables. Well, you should cook your vegetables because some uh, vegetables, when they're heated up, release enzymes, and then you can only absorb certain nutrients when it's heated up. 
But at the same time, if you only raw that, if you heat it, sometimes you lose those things that would be found when they're uncooked. So the, my rule of thumb is just eat vegetables, cook them, don't cook them, eat some vegetables. Yeah. Kind of important for you. Um, so insurance policy, is it an insurance policy or is it essential? Like should we all be taking a multivitamin or like a fish oil or something like that? Uh, my answer is yes, actually. Um, you know, I, I hate saying this because I always sound like a, like, a, like a salesperson, like, oh, you need to take your multivitamin and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but it's actually true. Like, when you look at the research, when you look at people who just function better, um, vitamins and minerals are essential. Like, they're literally essential. And nobody's getting enough, right? So it'd be one thing if everybody were getting enough and optimal levels of these vitamins and minerals, and I'd say no, but you're not. You're not, I'm not, probably no one is. So supplementing with this is really, really important. So. Um, multi, definitely essential. Omega-3, definitely essential. So like fish oil, krill oil, that kind of stuff. Uh, vitamin D, like I said earlier, is usually needed, especially if you're not getting a lot of sunshine. Uh, but a lot of these things, guys, you can get tested for. So you can go, it's pretty quick, easy blood work. Go to like a blood lab and they can take you and tell you what your vitamin D level is, right? Um, zinc and magnesium are often needed. Um, you can test for that as well. Um, and any suboptimal blood measure, you should take essential nutrients that replace that, right? So if you're too low on B12 or something like that, like take some B12, makes sense. Have you ever done that blood work that tells you what you're deficient mm -hmm. on? Yeah? Yeah, okay. yeah, so. Um, so is it like a set test where they have multiple vitamins they're checking for? Or so it really depends. Probably the best way, if you just like Google it, it's probably the best way to do it. Um, Can you just what? Like Google it, okay. just like Google like blood, blood test, lab okay. test, that type of stuff. Um, you can just get like a general panel of like vitamins and minerals and stuff like that. Well, they'll, you'll go to like a lab core and they'll test the blood. Uh, and then after a couple of weeks, they'll just kind of send you back for, where you tested positive for whatever. So, make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, and I don't recommend just taking any regular everyday supplement. Um, there's a lot, a lot, a lot, probably unfortunately more fraudulent types of supplements or useless supplements than there are beneficial supplements. And that's just the nature of the beast, unfortunately. It's, it's not regulated, the supplement industry is not regulated by the FDA. So um, I can be a supplement company and I can say, I've got gold in here. And uh, I can sell it and it could not, not actually have gold in it. No one would know the difference. Um, so there can be some some shady things that go on. A lot of supplement companies now, what they'll do is they'll use a, a bunch of ingredients that are proven effective, but there'll be like not enough of it to actually do anything. So look out for proprietary blends. Um, not saying that they're all bad, but just those are some things to be looking out for. So when it comes to like a multivitamin or something like that, the way that I want to do it, or, or the way that I break this down, guys, is step one. I'm thinking about taking a um, Think about taking a supplement, okay? So whatever the supplement is, let's say it's a, it's a fat burner, right? So what I need to do is I need to research and figure out if whatever the ingredient is in this fat burner, it's clinically proven effective, right? If I do research and it's like, this doesn't work, right? And I'm not saying some like random article that you know some girl named Karen came up with, um, I'm saying like an actual scientific research study done on it that says this doesn't do anything. Or let's say that there is one, like green tea extract or something like that. Oh, there's lots of research to say that it increases fat burning by X, Y, Z percent, okay? Okay, great, awesome. So if you can find that whatever ingredient is in there is proven effective, then you can get, all right, I'll move to step two. And I'm now I'm gonna look at what is it studied to be effective? What dose is it studied to be effective? at, right? If it's studied to be effective at 500 milligrams, but the pill that I'm taking is giving me 50 milligrams, is that pill doing anything for me unless I take 10 of them, right? So we want to make sure that the, the dosage of the effective ingredients is appropriate, okay? Um, then we want to make sure that it's bioavailable. What that means is that in whatever form you ingest it in or take it in, it actually works. So there are, um, there was a, a supplement study done on this, um, in, it's an amino acid called arginine. And what arginine does is if you infuse it, right, if you inject it into your, 
into your veins, it causes vasodilation, right? So it makes your veins expand a little bit more, so you get a little more oxygen, nutrient deliverability, stuff like that. Um, but then when they put it, uh, and so supplement companies saw this, like, oh, we're gonna give everybody arginine. So they put it in a capsule, okay? So everybody's like, oh, I'm gonna get a pump, right? Because they want blood flow, they want veins and weird stuff. Um, so they, they put it in, in their, their capsule, everybody starts buying it, arginine, arginine, arginine. As it turns out, it's not hardly bioavailable at all, um, orally, okay? So yes, it, it clinically dosed, right? They could have the appropriate clinical dose and it's proven effective, but it's not bioavailable. Bio Other things we'll talk about with like a multivitamin, um, are things like, uh, actually I'll, I'll just talk about it now, like folic acid uh, or folate, that is hardly absorbable at all. Like a lot of people actually have a, a, a gene deficiency called MTFR gene deficiency. You don't have to know what that means, but basically, or you don't have to know exactly what it is, but what it means is um, when you get folic acid, which is really important for like brain development, especially for uh, developing babies, if you don't have that MTHFR gene, that folic acid doesn't become bioavailable for you. Right? So if I'm looking for a bioavailable supplement, I'm going to go, well, I want it to be methylated, MTHR and methylated. So I want my uh, folic acid to be methylated. So when I'm taking like a multivitamin, I'm going to look at the multi, I'm going to go, okay, what's my folic acid? What's it say? If it just says folic acid, that means that it's not, the, the company's not done the research to make sure it's bioavailable for you. Same thing for like B12, um, that should also be methylated. Um, same thing for like zinc and magnesium. Uh, they're not very well absorbed if they're in a zinc or magnesium oxide form. They do better when they end in, so IVE is a salt, ATE, so if it ends in like taurinate or something like that, eight, means that it's more bioavailable. So make sure that whatever supplement you're taking, key ingredients are bioavailable. If they're bioavailable, if they're clinically dosed, if they've been proven effective, then your next step is to try it. Okay, see, how does it work for you? Is it working for you? Great, keep taking it. Doesn't do anything for you, you don't have to take it anymore. How do you necessarily gauge that? What, do you feel better? Yeah, I do yeah. actually. Okay. Yeah, right. so, um, so speaking of multivitamins, so uh, I've been working here for 10 years, which has been way too long, but when I, um, first came here, I mean, I, I got out of exercise science degree and I was like, oh, I need to take a multivitamin, I guess. And I would go to the multi, like multivitamin aisle at wherever, Walgreens or, or something. And I, and there's like 300 multivitamins, yeah. right? And you're just looking around and you're like, well, I've seen a commercial for Centrum. So you, know, you find the Centrum and like next to it's the knockoff brand, the knockoff brand, right? And you start taking this multivitamin and you're like, oh cool. And then you have like neon colored pee, which is fun. <laughs> um, but you don't really feel better, right? Like I felt the exact same. Um, so then eventually, because you don't get any benefit from it, or you don't notice that you have any benefit from it, you just forget to take it and stop taking it. Um, and finally I came to, to Lifetime, and I'm, you know, bored one day looking at all the supplements that they have, and there's like this multivitamin, and it's like $35. I'm like, what? I can get a 10-year supply for $8, <laughs> right? And I only have to take one tablet per day, Whereas this one, I have to take three in the morning and three at night. Like, that seems like a lot to me. Yeah. Um, but eventually, I got bored enough that I bought it. I don't know. So I buy it. And, like, the first night, especially when I took the PM one, like, I slept like a baby. I, I assume it was placebo, right? Like, oh, I just assumed I was going to sleep better. Um, but then all of a sudden, I started noticing, like, I wasn't getting sick. And, um, I actually forgot to take it for a while, and I noticed that like my brain wasn't functioning as quickly and smoothly as it was when I was taking it, and then I like started taking it again, and I started feeling better, so I had better sleep, I had better immunity, and I just felt better in general. Um, so that's when I kind of started, that's when it hit me personally, it's like, okay, wow, so if you take a good quality supplement, you should notice the you difference. So you should notice. You should notice a difference, okay. yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, sometimes because it comes on so slowly, you might not notice that it, happened mm -hmm. but you'll notice when you don't have it right so it's like well okay I feel kind of the same then you stop taking it and you're like wow I don't feel this good and you start taking it and you're like, oh, I guess I do so okay. sometimes it's not directly obvious um, 
but yeah, you and should so, like, notice skin difference. stuff. It takes about six weeks for me to notice something. How yeah. long did it take you to maybe like a, a year to take you consistently? Or? Well, with this, with the PM one, I noticed it day one. Okay, like, I really didn't notice it day one. Um, it had probably been a month or two of me taking okay. it consistently before. Uh, I realized that I did feel better, but that was just because I took a few days. I forgot to take it, mm -hmm. um, and so then I—that's when I realized, like, oh, I was actually okay. Yeah. Um, so just FYI, to save you time, honestly, our multivitamin is the best multivitamin. Uh, if you don't feel like you get a better result from our multivitamin, probably none of them are going to work. Um, but like, Lifetime really did do their research on on this multi. Like, it's perfectly dosed, it's all the ingredients are, are bioavailable. Um, they formulated it in the AM, right? So they give you the, the vitamins and minerals that kind of make you feel more alert. They don't have those alert vitamins and minerals in the evening, and they increase the amount of like minerals and stuff like zinc and magnesium that would help you sleep better at night. Um, so it's just a really, really good overall high quality multi. Um, we got a couple minutes before you gotta get, get going to your thing. Um, all right, so nutrient-dense foods. Obviously, you can't just take a supplement and eat Twinkies all day long. I guess you kind of can, but um, you shouldn't do that. So we need to start paying attention to nutrient-dense foods. So we're going to order a list of the highest nutrient-dense foods, meaning the most amount of vitamins and minerals and essential amino acids and all that kind of stuff, right? So vegetables are like your number one. Right. Nobody ever got, got fat because they ate too many vegetables, <laughs> right? Have you ever heard somebody be like, yeah, you know, I just got stressed out and I just had too many vegetables and <laughs> now I have diabetes, right? It's just not a thing. Uh, animal proteins are the next, right? So vegetables are generally lacking in like amino acids and some B vitamins and some iron and stuff like that where animal proteins have all of those types of things, right? And essential fatty acids. So if you only ate these two food groups, you'd live forever. Okay, boring, by the way. Uh, fruit is a really good high nutrient dense food group, um, followed by nuts, seeds, and kind of in subcategory beans, or not beans, sorry, oils and butters. Um, so those things are gonna be kind of your fats and, and whatnot. They're gonna be nutrient dense because they're gonna have some essential fats in there. Uh, and then you're gonna have kind of your starches category. right? So starches are gonna be like beans and lentils. Those are gonna be your higher vitamin and mineral dense um, things, starchy vegetables. Uh, everybody goes, well, wait, vegetables, 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 vegetables. Um, so starchy vegetables are three things. They're uh, peas, corn, and potatoes, okay? So peas, corn, potatoes, anything not peas, corn, potatoes is considered a fibrous vegetable. Makes sense, even carrots. Um, so you got your whole grains and even your processed starches, okay? So this is what your grocery shopping list should look like, by the way. When you go to the grocery store, think, I wanna get vegetables. Frozen vegetables, rice vegetables, I don't care, okay? Get them, whatever you like. Protein, you should be getting protein. What kind of protein are you gonna have to eat, right? Make sure you're getting some of that. If you're vegan or vegetarian, um, you're gonna have to get a little bit more creative in it, but if you're not, then it's pretty straightforward. Fruits, are you gonna get fruits, berries, you know, bananas, apples, whatever. Um, nuts, seeds, oils, butters, anything like that, and then starches, so that's your, that's your grocery shopping, right? Uh, so none of that is, uh, you know, frozen meals, by the way. But anyway, um, how much vegetables should I be having? I should be having five to seven servings per day. What's the serving of a vegetable? Fists, okay. So how many is five fists of vegetables? One, two, three, four. Okay. Think about that. That's a lot of vegetables. Okay. How's that? How's that going to do for your appetite? If you eat five vegetables a day, how's that gonna do for your appetite for bad food? Curve. Right, so we're eating more. Right. So psychologically, I want you guys to think about eating more. Animal proteins, okay, palm of your hand, serving of an animal protein. Okay, we should be having four, four of those per day. Is that a lot? Kind of is, right? Now, a lot of people can't do that just based on practicality, so protein supplements like scoops of protein, protein bars, stuff like that are pretty good alternatives. Right? But if you're eating one, two, three, four servings of uh, animal proteins and one, two, three, four, five servings of vegetables, that's like this much food. Okay, think about that spread throughout the day. Is that still a lot of food? Yeah. Yeah. Good, right? Uh, fruit, 
one, two, three, or one, right? That's pretty pretty straightforward. Nut seeds, I can eat nuts and seeds all day long. Um, so try yeah, yeah, and put, so fruit, one to three servings. Nuts and seeds, including oils and butters, are one to three servings per day. Um, fruit, by the way, is a fifth size serving. Uh, nuts and seeds is a palmful, okay? Not a handful, a palmful. Remember the difference? Palm is a palm, hand is a hand, palmful. Okay, because uh, remember, these are mostly fats, nine calories per gram, right? So it's more than twice the amount of carbohydrates and protein. So you gotta be careful with those. Now, if you're adding oils and butters to your food, thumb is a serving. Okay. You only wanna have one to three of these per day, okay? If any of you guys do salad dressings with oil on it, how much are you putting on there? How many cups of oil are you putting on there, right? Is it good for you? Yes. Is it too much? Yes. Reduce it down a little bit. Uh, starches, um, we want to have three to five servings per day and just choose from any one of these. That's um, a lot of food. It is, and, and that's what most people say. Yeah. And believe it or not, when you're doing this, you're giving your body the essential nutrients that it needs, okay? When you're giving your body the essential nutrients that it needs, it's gonna feel better, it's gonna function better, it's gonna burn calories better, um, and your appetite is gonna be like, great, right? So you're craving for ice cream and donuts and all that kind of fun stuff. Um, it's just gonna be, Reduced, so you don't have to use that willpower as much to kind of go like, oh, Taco Bell looks great, I don't, you know. Um, so best practices, I know you guys gotta get out of here. So grocery shop for only nutrient-dense foods, we just talked about that. Uh, prepare meals ahead of time. Grocery shop, get all this food, make the food. Put it in Tupperware, eat the food, right? That prevents you from having kind of uh, emergency situations um, where you're eating way too much bad food. Uh, take a high quality supplement. Uh, and consider doing this too, right? Going out to eat's not a problem. Think about that. When you go out to eat, think about the, the list that you guys just saw. Can you choose these types of things pretty much anywhere you go out to eat? Yeah. Except for maybe Dunkin' Donuts or something, but um, yeah, you can, right? So um, that's it here. Next week we're gonna talk about how to put all of this stuff together, right? We're gonna make it a little bit more step-by-step -step practical stuff to where by the time you guys are done with the 60 day, you're gonna be pretty comfortable uh, with how to grocery shop, how to eat, how to maintain all this kind of stuff, um, and keep good strategies uh, when it comes to you know, maintaining your results. Cool. Mm -hmm.